History from four. We are continuing with topic two, and the topic number two uh, is developments in the interwar period. Development in the interwar period, and the interwar period basically we mean uh, the period uh, starting from 1919 to 1939. So uh, that is. Uh, the period of uh, the interwar. So we'll be focusing on that period this time around. Now, uh, this uh, thing, uh, there, during this period, there were so many events that took place. And uh, one of it, or the major one, is the Versailles Treaty or the Paris uh, Peace Conference. So this one, uh, it happened that the Allied leaders they met in Paris, that is France. The reason for the meeting was to discuss or uh, to formalize the end of the war. But what happened was that uh, about uh, representatives they came from 30 countries, but Germany and uh, all other defeated powers they were not uh, allowed to the meeting. So Russia also was uh, prohibited reason there was communism so uh, the leaders in western countries they didn't they didn't want the spread of communism into that area so uh, basically the countries that dominated this meeting was britain france usa as well as italy so uh, the leaders of those uh, four countries they are called the big four the big four so basically uh, they wanted to prevent a future a war because they, this war they uh, there were so many casualties uh, there were so many casualties so many problems were raised because of this war so uh, they had their own agendas among the big four everyone has had his own agenda to say uh, they wanted something to happen in uh, to their side or to their favor now basically this Versailles uh, peace conference it had a, uh, the aims aim number one was to weaken germany to weaken germany then uh, the other one was to establish to establish a just and lasting peace and also to punish germany and also others to uh, reward the victor. So we are going to look at uh, basically uh, how were these aims made. Now, the big four, Britain, uh, USA, France, and Italy, they had their positions. Now, what was the position of USA? So the president of USA represented at the meeting was Woodrow Wilson from USA. So. USA uh, entered the war, if you can remember, entered the war in 1917, and the USA had very few casualties. So uh, the stand of Woodrow Wilson, uh, basically, uh, he did not he did not have that feeling to punish Germany because he thought that it would make her bitter for revenge. But what he did was that he came with 14 points, which he thought that they would be the basis for peace, for lasting peace. And yes, uh, there were those uh, uh, 14 points from Woodrow Wilson that dominated uh, the agenda of the peace conference. So basically, uh, they met there. Now, uh, George Cremesu uh, also uh, from France, from France. Now, uh, George Clemenceau uh, represented France. So France was the country that suffered more damage than any other country. So uh, Clemenceau, just as many of his people, they wanted uh, Germany to be punished severely for the damage caused in France. So 
uh, he wanted uh, Germany to pay heavy reparations, that is uh, compensation for war, uh, compensation for the loss. So he also wanted the Rhineland, the Rhineland to be separated from Germany. Rhineland was the place where uh, uh, the soldiers, there were so many soldiers for Germany, so they wanted uh, that one to create a free space to say there must be a demarcation to say uh, Rhineland should not uh, be occupied by any army and should be a free space between uh, France and Germany. So he wanted to cripple Germany uh, to avoid the future war. So that was the position of uh, George Clemenceau. David Lloyd from Britain. So basically he was moderate in his personal views. He did not want uh, Germany to be punished uh, to avoid the future trouble. Uh, so uh, basically he is uh, uh, thinking was that uh, the best solution was uh, to build the economy for Germany, to build the economy for Germany through trade and uh, cre by creating a friendly environment. So he was basically influenced by the British citizens who sought the punishment for Germany and to hang uh, the Kaiser. Right, now we continue uh, with the, the positions, positions of the big four at the Versailles Treaty. Now we have looked at three. Now let's look at the uh, the last one. This is Vittorio Orlando. Vittorio Orlando was from Italy. Now, uh, Italy uh, at the uh, peace conference uh, was not concerned with the peace treaty or even the issue of punishing Germany. That was not the concern of Italy. So Italy uh, basically came, uh, she came to be rewarded, to be rewarded with the promised territories from Austria, according to the London Treaty that took place in 1915. So the views of Vittorio Orlando were rejected. They were rejected because they were against the self-determination policy according to the 14 points of Wilson, whereby people were free to form their uh, own people's government and to join any, uh, any anything they, they would like to join. So it was against the self-determination policy. So with that then, uh, Vittorio Orlando pulled out from the conference area uh, than uh, expected. Now, uh, what about the non-Western countries at the conference? So what were their stand? So basically the, biz, uh, the, uh, the big four, the big four, uh, they treated the non-European representatives with lack of respect. They were not respected at all. For example, we talk of uh, Jean Smuts. Jean Smuts of uh, South Africa. Uh, he talked about uh, the disadvantage of uh, having that spirit of vengeance. Uh, not to have the spirit of vengeance to the defeated powers, especially on Germany. So his views were ignored, they were ignored to say they, were, they counted nothing. So the Western leaders basically, uh, they held the views that the whites were superior than all the colonial, uh, the colonies. So uh, as a result, this view or the views of other people who were not uh, European, represented at the Versailles Treaty, those views were not taken. And uh, this one was actually dominated by Italy, France, and Britain. They were the ones that dominated even uh, the talks there at the uh, Paris Peace Settlement. Now, uh, 
it also happened that uh, they actually held the views that these colonies or the colonies or territories they were not uh, able to stand on their own therefore they had to be looked after and what happened was that they took all the colonies of germany in asia as well as in uh, africa uh, they took them to their side without even consulting the natives to say now you are no longer from uh, for germany you are for Britain. so they were not consulted so they were taken by by force so you can see that one and even japan japan at one time proposed uh, to say there should be no uh, there should be no uh, discrimination no discrimination then uh, that one was uh, rejected again and that one uh, led japan or made japan to pull out from the league of nations we are going to look at that one when we come to the league of nations now what was the treaty uh, what were the, the agreements that were done so the treaty basically it was said in different uh, it came in different ways for example there were the territorial losses territorial losses so places like finland uh, estonia lavitia lithuania these ones were made independent uh, they were made independent remember all these ones they were gained from the brest litovsk treaty that was signed between germany and russia uh, during that time when russia was pulling out of the uh, the treaty now uh, poland became independent and assess and Roland, remember 1871 when uh, Russia, uh, uh, france lost uh, assess and Roland. so they were returned according to the treaty uh, Ukraine and mamede they went to belgium and north school streets they uh, this one went to denmark and all German and Turkish territories were taken by the Allied powers or the Allied powers they took all the German territories and the Turkish territories military terms the anxious union of Germany and Austria was forbidden and Germany uh, the army was reduced it was reduced to 100,000 men and with only six battleships six battleships no submarine no aircraft so uh, and the rhineland that area uh, the military zone of germany was demilitarized that is no military activity to take place there and uh, the economic terms of the versailles treaty it was uh, such that uh, all the war uh, the war guilty clause was fixed uh, on or fixed the blame on germany for having starting the war so it was like germany uh, was accused of starting the war as a result germany was to pay 6600 million as a reparations as a compensation to the damage that was caused so with that uh, it was a lot of money this was a lot of money 6600 million pounds it was a lot of money so it was to be paid by germany to the allied powers and political terms league of nations was made it was, they made the league of nations as an international peace body so basically it was there to maintain peace and they also set up the conference of ambassadors conference of ambassadors so this conference it was to deal with issues that will arise after the meeting after the versailles treaty so after six months this conference of ambassadors uh, prepares uh, prepared the terms uh, and germany was invited to sign after six months now germany tried to protest but when uh, she was trying to protest Germany uh, or the Allied uh, forces, they threatened Germany to say, hey, we are going to uh, resume the war. Then they uh, signed 
They were protesting because they, they saw that the conditions were so harsh. The conditions were harsh. They were not good conditions uh, uh, to the liking of Germany. Now, so they accepted the treaty and two German representatives, the two German representatives, uh, they signed. It was signed by two representatives. They signed. And when was that? It was on 28th June 1919 at the Hall of Millers. So it took place at the Hall of Millers on 28th June uh, 1919. That is to say after six months, as you can see, after six months when the uh, Conference of Ambassadors uh, prepared all the terms, all the conditions after uh, the treaty, then they invited German to sign. So that's what happened. Then after that, after Germany uh, had signed the treaty, it also happened that uh, the allies, the allied powers, they also made uh, some treaties with the, the allies of Germany. The friends of Germany were also uh, made to sign treaties at different times. So there was this one, the first treaty was uh, the Saint Germain. So this one, it was a treaty uh, between the Allies and the Austria. Austria. Now it was in September 1919. So the terms uh, was that the Anschluss was forbidden. Anschluss, we have said that it was the union, the union of Germany and uh, Austria. So Austria was disarmed to only 20,000 troops, 20,000 soldiers only. And Austria also lost the territories. She lost some territories. What were these territories? Uh, she lost uh, Bohemia and Moravia. They were lost to Czechoslovakia. And Bosnia, Bosnia Herzegovina went to Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia got Bosnia Herzegovina. And other territories also went to Poland, Italy, and Romania. So that's what happened to Austria. She lost uh, a lot of territories. Then there was the Treaty of New Italy. The Treaty of New Italy. The Treaty of New Italy. So it was another treaty with Bulgaria. Remember, Bulgaria was to the side of uh, Germany and Austria Hungary during the First World War. So the Ares, they signed a treaty with Bulgaria in November. Uh, it was in November 1919. So Bulgaria uh, was less uh, cruel, cruel, cruel as compared to others. So uh, because she was not so much involved in the war. But however, she lost the territories to Greece, Romania, and Yugoslavia. And there was also the Treaty of Trion, Tri Trionum, 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 yes, Trionum, with Austria, Hung uh, with Hungary. Remember, the first one was with the Austria separately, but this one now, it was the treaty uh, with uh, Hungary separately. So there was a treaty with the Austria and there was a treaty with the, uh, Hungary separately. So they dealt uh, with the Hungary in 1920 in March and parts of Hungary were added to new states. For example, Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia got Ruthenia and Slovakia. I think that's why you have Czechoslovakia. It's the Czech Republic, then it was added Slovakia to make Czechoslovakia. So uh, they got from Hungary, Ruthenia and Slovakia. And Yugoslavia got Slovenia as well as Croatia. Croatia. And Hungary was also disarmed. So Hungary was disarmed just as the Germany, uh, Austria, and Hungary followed the same. Then there was the Treaty of Sevres, the Treaty of Sevres, Sevres with Turkey. Te uh, so this one, uh, it was uh, in 1920 as well. So there was uh, this territory of Sumna, uh, 
uh, it went to Greece, Palestine, Iraq, and Transjordan. They became the British mandates. So the British mandates, thereby it meant that they were looked after by the British. So Syria was made a French mandate there. So you have to uh, take note of that. Then Teke was to pay reparations to Aries as well. So Teke was to pay some uh, uh, reparations. Then there was also the other, the other treaty. So this treaty was the treaty uh, of Lausanne, that is in 1923. So Teke was bitter with the, the treaty of Severus. Why? You can see to it that uh, after losing some territories, she was also asked to pay some uh, some reparations. So that one did not go well with Tete. So there was this leader, uh, he came to power. So his name was Mustafa, Mustafa Kemal. So when he came to power in 1923, he rejected the terms of the, the sovereigns. Uh, that is uh, what happened there. So he revolted and drove out the Greeks from Sumna. Remember, uh, Sumna went to, Greek, to Greece. So when Mustafa in 1923 came to the power, that is, uh, became the leader of Turkey, he drove the Greeks out of Sumna. So by the Treaty of Lausanne, therefore, in 1923, uh, Turkey regained Sumna from Greece. So it was settled just like that. Now, how did Germany react? How did Germany react to the uh, Versailles Treaty? So Germany reacted. So number one, he took it as a diktat. A diktat uh, it means that it was a dictated peace, dictated peace. So he uh, took that one, uh, the treaty, as the dictated peace. Then, uh, why did they say that? Simply because they, uh, they said that they were not invited to the peace settlement and they were only called for the signing of for the terms of which they did not agree. They were only called to say, come here, we have a pen and some terms here, write somewhere here. So I think there they had the right to uh, say it was really a dictate. So they also resented this war guilty clause, uh, clause that fixed uh, uh, the entire blame on them. So they also argued to say other countries were equally guilty uh, for, the, for starting the war. Uh, they also claimed that they were promised a treaty based on Wilson's 14 points. But the terms were not according to the uh, Wilson's 14 points. They were harsh. They uh, took them to say they were very harsh conditions. And again, they protested the disarmament clause, by re uh, which reduced their military and their arms. They did not agree with that to say to have only 100,000 soldiers, six battleships, a big country like us, no, it cannot happen. So they protested uh, that one. And again, re uh, reparations, the reparations which they were asked to pay as a compensation. These ones, they took it to say, no, it was, it is a humiliation to Germany. How can we pay uh, such huge sum of money? Then some Germans, they argued, they argued that uh, the treaty itself was signed by wrong people. Wrong people signed the treaty, so they were not happy. So they suggested that this treaty, it was supposed to be signed by the army generals, the people who were in the battlefront and not the Weimar Republic, not the people who were not there uh, in the war front. So they argued that no. Uh, wrong people signed the treaty. Now, let's now assess. Let, let's come to the end of this by assessing, assessing the Vasarius Treaty. So, we'll look at both sides, the strength as well as the weaknesses. 
So the Veseris Treaty had both the strengths and the weaknesses. Now let's start with the strength. So on the strength, uh, it created uh, uh, the League of Nations. It led to the creation of the Re League of Nations. Now, uh, again, it made the first systematic attempt to redraw the map of Europe along national lines. What does this mean? It means that this time around, uh, as territories were being shared to say this part goes to this country, this other goes to the other country, they were trying to draw the map the map uh, to show that this country now should appear like this as they are appearing now so those were the strength but there were so many weaknesses to begin with uh, self-determination was applied to all countries except germany why simply because we see the anxious the anxious was forbidden the anxious the union the self-determination, it was about a choice of people to come into a grouping by their choice, not to be forbidden. So we see Germany being forbidden to make the, uh, the Anschluss there. So we see to it that uh, self-determination there was not applied to Germany. And Germans uh, in Sudetenland, Sudetenland were found in Czechoslovakia not by their wish, but because of their uh, of the rule to say now we are making the demarcation here, uh, Germany or all the Germans on the side of uh, uh, this Sudetenland they go to Czechoslovakia, so it was not out of their wish. And again, it happened. Also, the Germans were in the Polish uh, corridor; they went to Poland, not out of their wish. So it was dictated on them. So uh, basically, we are saying that self-determination was not applied. So remember, self-determination, which was uh, advocated by Wilson. Then uh, reparations were too high and they crippled uh, Germany. So these reparations, the war payments for the laws, these ones that were charged on Germany, they were too high. So they crippled the economy of Germany. And again, it created power, power vacuum in Eastern Europe. Why? Because Germany was surrounded by small and weak countries. Germany uh, found himself to be uh, surrounded by small and weak states there. Then uh, there were only small countries or small states. Uh, these small states included Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Czechoslovakia. So they were all weak neighbors. So she would overrun them uh, once recovered. So there was that power vacuum that uh, Germany was given or was surrounded by weak states, whereby uh, if given a chance to recover, then she would just uh, maybe overrun them or uh, get them by force. And also, it created uh, the creation of new states affected trade. So how did this affect trade? It was simply because of uh, the tariffs. Goods could cross so many countries to reach the country. As a result, each country the goods cross, they have to pay the, tra the tariffs there for using the roads there. So as a result, uh, it affected trade. So trade was affected uh, because of the creation of many states. And it created the problem of minority. The problem of minority. Since new states consisted of mix or a mix of ethnic or racial groups, see. So, what happened then there was that the minority often suffered in these territories. What we are saying here is that, uh, like for example, we are taking uh, the Germans who were found in Poland. You find that those Germans were in uh, were the minority. And as a result, they were not regarded 
uh, or maybe considered much because they were the minority. So it was a problem, uh, uh, and it becomes a problem in a country usually when uh, the other group, they are the minority, they are, and the other ones, they are in large numbers. So uh, that was that problem. And also, harsh terms continued uh, the bitterness. These harsh terms continued the bitterness in Germany, uh, which later led to uh, the Second World War, which broke out in 1939. So, again, the treaty failed to bring about stability in Europe. So, conflicts were there. Uh, so, there were conflicts resumed in Europe soon after the signing of the treaty. So, the treaty, it failed to bring stability. Right, so uh, we are going to stop here for now, but uh, in the next period, we are going to proceed by looking at the formation of the League of Nations. The formation of the League of Nations. So on this part, we are going to look at a number of issues as well. To say why, why was it formed? and how it was organized and some of the organs there that made up the League of Nations, the successes as well as the failures of this League of Nations. So we see to it that after the uh, Paris Conference or one of the products of the Paris Peace Conference, it was uh, this formation of the League of Nations. So we're going to see the successes or how it was organized and uh, some of the functions of this League of Nations. So it is another wonderful part because uh, be, today we talk of the United Nations and sometime later in uh, this uh, uh, one of the topics in Form 4, we talk about the United Nations, which was formed after the League of Nations. But first we have to know what was it, the League of Nations? So it will be a very good one again to do. So let us be together in the next period. Until that time, thank you so much. Ndipo anti wapunzira wa ndu otu maso kwa mbili. Ndienga tisimupunzira, skulu wakuikirani haba, mukala otu midwa.